Now today's message is called Putting Limits on Your Helper. As human beings in the humanity, many of us have been in a place where we have needed help. Amen? All of us. And sometimes we tend to push the help away for different reasons. One of the reasons may be out of lack of trust. Some of us are in need of help, but when somebody comes to help us, we refuse to receive the help because of lack of trust, because of our past experiences. This, per this person did me wrong. I can no longer trust in anybody. So we decide to push the help, and that help could be sent by God. And we tend to push it away and continue doing it on our own. So we put limits for different reasons. Right now, I would like to talk about our helper. In our Christian walk, in our daily walk, who's our helper? Who's our comforter? Who's our guide? We all receive Jesus Christ. Amen? We all, ch we all are children of God. We all receive Christ. So who's our helper? Who's been helping us throughout this time? The Holy Spirit. Amen? It's kind of, for some who are just starting to get to know Christ, who have just started to get to know this walk, the Holy Spirit is kind of like taboo. You know, you want to keep it in a box because, you know, once we hear the Holy Spirit, you think about, oh, people are going to start acting up. They're going to start, you know, doing these things on the floor, acting a little crazy. They look funny. And, oh, my gosh, the Holy Spirit, oh, oh, we can't really talk about that. I mean, it does exist. We do have the Holy Spirit in us. But I don't want to act funny. I don't want to look funny. So we tend to, like, limit our helper. We push the helper down because it's taboo. You know, we, we don't want to look religious. So the word today is we have been putting our helper down, the Holy Spirit. That's our guide. That's our aid in our Christian walk. And today, God is telling you, please use the Holy Spirit. He's in you. He was left for a reason, for a purpose. So in order for us to walk righteously, to walk right, to be guided and helped, we need to understand that the Holy Spirit does exist. He's not just taboo. He's not just someone that, you know, you mention and that's it. And he wants you to know that use your, the Holy Spirit. Use it. He's there for a reason. Points to cover. What is the role of the Holy Spirit? How do you experience the Holy Spirit? And what hinders us from receiving the power of the Holy Spirit? So what is the role of the Holy Spirit? If we all look into the book of John, if we open our Bibles, so Jesus, he walked on this earth, amen? He walked on this earth. You heard about the great miracles that he did. You heard about the amazing people that he used. You saw his amazing power. But what, what happened after that? He had to go. He had to leave this earth. Why? Because only through his in my life at this point in time, yada, yada, yada. And then eventually when I continued going, they were like, well, you know, in order to help you in that situation, we need more money from you. You know, more money. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm stupid, but I'm not that stupid. <laughs> I'm not giving any more money that I'm already spending. So I left. And eventually, there's always consequences to that. Once you visit a spiritual place where it's not God-led, there's consequences to it. There's two different spiritual realms, the evil and the good. So you start messing around with something that you don't know, you're going to get some type, some type of consequence. And through that, I was paranoid. I was very paranoid. I thought everybody was out to get me. And I was like, oh my gosh, my life is going to be destroyed. I'm not going to get married. Um, I'm not going to finish college. And I was like, all, all these thoughts started coming to my head. And it was really bad. It was getting worse and worse. I started becoming depressed. And through that, eventually, you know, I received Christ. I learned more about that. And I was able to get, push that aside. Anyways, anyways. So this is where the spirit of discernment comes in. It took time for me to actually understand the Holy Spirit. 
I received Christ in 2007. I didn't get to actually experience the Holy Spirit until 2012. Why? Because of, out of fear. Not because of, oh, the Holy Spirit, I don't want to act a certain way. It's because under the leadership that we were in, I saw them. I'm like, wow, they're so, they're professional. Like, you know, even when they pray, they have like some type of, you know, uh, a, you know, a gift, you know, and I was like intimidated by it. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, I'm never going to reach that, you know. It's only for specific people that can receive the Holy Spirit, that, that, you know, that gift. And, you know, I started downing myself so much, so much. And then I started going to the services over and over again. And I'm just like, God, is this it? Like, is this, you know, just going to service and just praying and not experiencing you fully? Eventually, I started to inquire more about it. I started now talking to God the way I should have been. God, you know, I really, I really, I need your help. You know, why is it that certain people can speak those tongues that they're speaking? Why is it that, you know, people fall out? You know, I know that they have an encounter with you. Why don't I have that encounter? So eventually, you know, God started speaking to me. It's because you're stopping it. You're putting a limit to me, to my power. The way you're talking to me now is the way I wanted you to talk to me. That's prayer. It's not about talking in, in like, an eloquent speech. That's not the, one, the way I want you to pray. Talk to me. Get to know me. That's when I started getting to know God and reading the word. And eventually, I was able to break free and started praying, you know, with liberty and not caring about, you know, what other people may say. And I started to get to activate the Holy Spirit. Activating the Holy Spirit. So then, fast forward. I work in the Bronx, and I'm trying to get something to eat during lunchtime, and it's very limited, like the areas is very limited, food, all that. But I was very hungry, and I wanted some Spanish food. And there was this one Puerto Rican spot um, on the way, on the way. And it was small, and I was like, oh, cool. We have, like, you know, the empanadas and all that. It's cool. I found, I discovered a treasure. However, you know, I went in, I was like, I was looking at the food. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is great, this is great, this is great. And then all of a sudden, you know, I ordered, and I was waiting for the order, and I started looking around. And I was like, oh. And it started to smell something. I was like, oh, gosh. They do witchcraft here. They do witchcraft here. <laughs> and, you know, he started looking at the dolls and the stuff and, like, the crosses and all that weird stuff. And I'm like, and I just ordered, and I paid for it already. So I was very hungry. I'm, I have to admit, I prayed over my food like 10 times. So I was like, you know, I can't waste this food. I paid $7 for it. So I, I did. I, I went to my car, and I ate it. I prayed over it, and I ate it. And then, you know, I started to tell my friends who, who are connected with God. I'm like, oh, you know, this, there's this place, you know, around the way. And, you know, I felt weird about it. And she was like, really? I've been there, and I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel anything. I'm like, really? Maybe it's just my mind. Maybe it's just, like, me bugging out or something. So I tried it again. I tried it. I, I went again. and But I didn't want any food. I didn't want food. I wanted, like, a shake, like a smoothie or something. So I went, and I was like, okay, let's try this again. Maybe it's my mind. Like, I was, like, battling. It's like, it's my mind. It's my mind. You know, everybody says it's okay, this place is okay, they don't feel anything, maybe it's just me, like, being extra spiritual, whatever the case is. But anyways, I went, and then as I was going to order, there was, like, a tug, a tug in my spirit, and I wanted to throw up. That's the spirit of discernment. That's the type of, of thing that you want in your life. And it was just, like, Okay, like, it, I, I couldn't even speak to the woman to, like, oh, I'm going to, I had to walk out. And the lady was like, oh, I just walked out. So that's the type of work the Holy Spirit does in you. When you get that spirit of discernment, when you're connected with the Spirit, it's not only in church, guys. You shouldn't be able to, oh, I'm going to church and I'm just going to experience the Holy Spirit. It shouldn't be always here. It could be anywhere in your life. And it doesn't have to be like one of those experiences where you fall out or you start speaking in tongues. The Holy Spirit could reveal itself anywhere, in any way in your life. That spirit of discernment was powerful to me. I was like, what? 
I am never going to push away the Holy Spirit. I get you. I get, I, get, I got it. I got it. I got it. I understand. I understand. So we should not limit the power of the Holy Spirit. We keep on just like saying, you can only stick in this box, only in this part of my life, only in my church life. And that's not the case. The Holy Spirit has so much power, you don't even understand the power that the Holy Spirit has. Many of you, how many of you experience the Holy Spirit? Amen? Amen? You know it. You know it. There's no limits. You cannot box in the Holy Spirit. And this is not about, this is not about fainting. This is not about throwing yourself on the floor. This is not about that. It does happen. Let me tell you, it does happen because it happened to me. It definitely happened to me. If the Holy Spirit speaks into you, you got to shut up sometimes. And you try and you fall. You end up falling because, like, it's not. I'm trying to tell you something. And we try to, like, control it. And then we end up falling. You know, it happens. Some people fake it, but some, no, it's real. It's real, guys. It's real. Trust me, it's real. Just because you haven't experienced it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Don't limit the power of the Holy Spirit. Get to know it. It's not taboo. We're believers. God did it then. Christ did it then. And he's doing it now. He does not change. Before he left, he said to us, the same power that you see, you've seen in him, do. He's going to make greater things within you. You're going to experience greater things than, than anything. So don't forget. Activate that Holy Spirit. He is a spiritual gift. And the Holy Spirit gives you those spiritual gifts. Discernment is like one of my, more than anything, I love that. Speak to God. I want a spirit of discernment. I want to be able to dictate what's bad and what's wrong. Because sometimes we we don't do it intentionally. We just make the wrong decisions just because. It's not that we intentionally do it. I was like, Lord, before anything, before I make this decision, please, I need you. Give wisdom. I need to discern what is good and what is bad. What should I do? What house should I buy? What car should I buy? That's what I'm talking about, the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit also produces fruits of the spirits. Galatians 5, 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentle, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. To those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep, this, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So not only do, do you get the spiritual gifts, you know, the, the prophecies, the, the teaching, all that, but he provides the spirits of the fruit which is something that we need. I mean, we cannot <clears throat> walk right without these, the spirits of the fruit. If we have a gift of prophecy or we have a gift of preaching and we, we don't have love, then what is it? You know, what are we doing? Who are we doing it for? So the gifts of the fruit, the love, the peace, the gentleness, the self-control, 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 yes. Speaking to myself, controlling ourselves, saying no to the flesh. It is very desirable. It is very, it feels, it may feel good to raise your voice at somebody or say something, you know, not so nice when they're acting up. But self-control. Holy Spirit, Please activate that self-control. I know I have it. Help me. Help me speak to people right. Help me not overact with certain people. Help me be placed in their shoes because I may not know what they're going through. That's one of my things now. I pray. Lord, help me understand. I don't want to know the details, but at least help me understand what they're going through because there's no reason why they should be acting like this. You know, that's my thing. And and then I'm like, you know what? I cannot say anything because I was once there. And somebody had grace and mercy and was willing to hear me out. 
So my prayers lately when it comes to self-control is help me put myself in their shoes. I don't know exactly what they're going through, but they're acting up. I have to, so I have to tell them, approach them about it. Um, you're not acting right. You know, this is not something that, you know, we see in you. You know, I love you dearly, but um, there's something wrong, and I have to tell you. Talk in love to people. Let's not overreact. Let's not allow our flesh take over. Amen? The spirits of the fruit is a must. It's just needed. We cannot do anything. We cannot serve God. We cannot serve God in church. We cannot serve God outside without having this spirit, the spirits of the fruit. Peace, love, kindness, self-control, all that we need. Holy Spirit, and this is only produced by who? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. It's not a taboo. It's not a taboo. How do we experience the Holy Spirit? The first thing we have to know is acknowledge that he exists. Jesus left behind the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the helper, and the advocate. We have to acknowledge that he lives within us. Amen? We cannot walk this walk with our own strength. That's a definite. We have the Spirit already, but we need to apply and activate it. The Spirit and, ex and experience him on, on our daily walk is not only in church. We don't come to church every Sunday and just like, I want to feel you, Holy Spirit. I want to live the rest of my life with experiencing the Holy Spirit, not only in church. Not only in church. Don't limit. Don't limit the Holy Spirit. Oh, I'm going to church because I want to experience the Holy Spirit. Don't. You should be able to experience it in the daily walk, in your daily walk. Some people get, ah, oh, you know, when they come to church, oh, the word didn't, you know, it didn't touch. It didn't, you know. The Holy Spirit wasn't there. Like, you haven't heard so, I've heard so many people say, you know, the Holy Spirit is not there. You know, this and that and a third. No, no, you haven't activated your Holy, the Holy Spirit. You haven't activated. You haven't gotten to understand. You haven't acknowledged it yet. And this is not based on emotions. Experience the Holy Spirit is not just based on emotions about crying, yelling and screaming. Yes, we do have emotions. We do have feelings. God has feelings. There's times that we cry. We cry because we're hurt, which is fine. This is what this, the, the church is for. We're hurt. We cry because we're excited. We cry for different reasons. And it's good to express your emotions and feelings, but don't live on them. In the word, in Ephesians 6.10, this is how you acknowledge, you acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 6, 10 to 17 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, and against the powers of the dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm. Then with the belt of truth, buckle around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which the word of God is, which the word of God is. We have to understand to use our weapons. The word of God, the salvation. We have to understand that we are saved through his grace, by his grace, by his mercy. We have to get that in our heads. No longer living in the past of what he has not forgiven me. He already has forgiven. You've confessed it. He already knows about it. He forgot about it. Don't let the enemy, this is what Sister Elisa did, which was awesome. She exposed the enemy. You're not going to have, enemy, you're not going to have rule over my mind anymore. I'm going to expose you for what you have done to me. You're no longer in control of my life. You're no longer going to be in my head. 
I am saved. I am saved. So we have to learn how to put on the full armor of God. And once we have put on the full armor of God, get to know the word, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. We can start understanding the, the spirit, the Holy Spirit activating. You're activating the Holy Spirit. Understanding the full armor of God, you're activating the Holy Spirit. So one of the things, if you want to experience the Holy Spirit, if you have not received, you have not felt it, you haven't experienced it, acknowledge that he exists. Acknowledge that the Holy Spirit lives within you. And put on the full armor. Also, consecrate. The more detailed we are with God, the more open we are with God, he's able to use us. Giving all that we are and all that we have. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Consecrate yourself. Say, God, I'm, I am here. I want to change my life. I know that you can provide me peace. I know that you can change me, help change me. I know that you're going to be in the process through this struggle that I am. Consecrating yourself. Acknowledging that he is there and you could be more open to him. Obedience. If we never interact with God, how do we know that we misbehave? Who tells us that we're doing wrong? How do we know? If we have no conversation with God, how do we know that we're pleasing him or obeying him? We have to have a conversation with God in order for him, the Holy Spirit, to say, listen, I'm shining a light in the area that you need help in. This is sin. This is not part of obeying me. I want you to address it right now. This is what the Holy Spirit does. And if we have not experienced it, it's because we haven't fully opened our mouth. And we don't have conversations with him on a, a day-to-day basis. So if we want to experience the Holy Spirit in our life, we have to have a conversation with him. He's going to shed light on sin that is still there. And he's going to reveal the truth to you in his word. So we have to start opening our mouth. And in obeying him, we have to speak to him. God, what am I doing wrong? I know that I'm a little off. But I need you to shed light on the area that I need to work on. That's when the Holy Spirit. All right, you ask. You ask. What hinders us from receiving the Holy Spirit? Doubt and fear. The fear of man brings a snare. But whoever trusts in and puts his confidence in the Lord will be exalted and safe. When a person gets caught in a snare, which is a trap, they can no longer move. So when you're entrapped with fear and doubt, you can't move. So it hinders the Holy Spirit. So if you're living still in fear, it kind of doesn't allow the Holy Spirit to move in the life, in your life, the way he wants to move. You're hindering him. You already have doubt that he exists. When you fear, sometimes you look into much of, oh, what are people going to think? What are people going to say? That kind of hinders the Holy Spirit. Why should we? If we're, if we're acting obedient, if we're walking well, why do we care about what other people say? Why do we add extra stress to our lives? So you're paying attention to that aspect, and that hinders the Holy Spirit from moving the way he wants to move. Holding grudges. When you hold the grudge, you refuse to forgive that's what it is we're not saying unforgiveness a grudge is when we refuse to forgive when you you when you have a grudge when we refuse to forgive it's an ongoing thing in our minds 
oh, this person, I can't, I can't believe this person is the same. It runs in our head and we, it becomes like an idol. Every time you're reminded of that person that they did to you or what they didn't do to you or whatever the case is, it's like a nag. It's like there and it's just like, look, look, look at what they did. Look at what they did. Look at what they did. It's a constant. That hinders the Holy Spirit from speaking into you. The, the Holy Spirit cannot speak into you if that's constantly going on in your mind and, and that's your worry. Walking in front in our flesh. When we do things that we're not supposed to do, we're walking in our flesh. Walking in anger. Walking in fear. So using drunks, so using the things that is going to affect us. That hinders us from receiving the Holy Spirit. So when you say, God, I don't feel your presence. I don't, I don't feel you. There's something wrong. He's trying to shed light in an area, and you're pushing him away. Thank you for joining the NBMI experience today. Like, comment, and subscribe at www.facebook.com front slash NBMINY or our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com front slash N-B-M-I-C-H-U-R-C-H. Also check out our new and improved website at www.newbeginningschurches.com. And finally, check out our new awesome church app, available on both Android and Apple platforms. Search your app store for N-B-M-I-C-H-U-R-C-H and be blessed.